Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Co-Director at the LA County USC Medical Center in Los Angeles, California, and welcome to Sound Bites. Today's clinical case is entitled, Fourth of July, In My Eye, and our patient today is a 24-year-old male who presents to the emergency department complaining of painless loss of vision to his right eye. Initially, he was reading an engineering textbook in preparation for final exams when he experienced flashes of lights into the right eye like fireworks. And now he notes decreased vision to his right eye described like a curtain coming in from the side. So the history taken from our patient suggests pathology in the posterior aspect of the patient's eye. And unfortunately for us, this has traditionally been a black box area of the eye is very difficult to examine using traditional means. So that leads us into our clinical question for today, which is for physicians working in the emergency department in the year 2011, what techniques do we currently have to make the diagnosis of pathology within the posterior aspect of the eye? And can we do better than our traditional testing? Traditionally, we've used the fundoscopic exam to examine the posterior aspect of the eye. And interestingly enough, we're currently using technology, the ophthalmoscope, which was originally invented in the year 1851 by von Helmholtz in Germany. Now, this was adapted in 1915 by Welch Allen into our modern ophthalmoscope that we see here to the upper left. And we've had a slight improvement with the fundoscopic gun, as shown here towards the right, which may give a better view of the retina. However, it's well understood by ophthalmologists that direct ophthalmoscopy gives a limited view of the retina in comparison to the techniques that they'll use on examination of the retina, which is indirect ophthalmoscopy using a mirror and curved lens. In fact, making the topic of ocular ultrasound very pertinent for the emergency physician is the fact that the eye is actually the perfect organ for ultrasound examination and could not have been engineered better. Fluid throughout the eye allows for great conduction of sound waves through the anterior part of the eye into the posterior aspect of the eye and excellent imaging of all parts of the eye. Many types of pathology can be correctly diagnosed using bedside ultrasonography. So what do I need to perform this examination? Well, any standard emergency department bedside ultrasound machine will do well for this exam. We'll need to have the high-frequency linear array type probe. That's the probe that you're already using for vascular access, which we'll be using for ocular ultrasound. We'll need lots of gel or preferably Surgilube, as Surgilube is less irritating to the closed eyelid. Now let's watch a video on how to perform the ocular ultrasound examination. Here we have the high-frequency linear type array probe in our hand, and note we've prepared our patient with a copious amount of surgical loop on the outer part of the closed eyelid. We're going to gently place the probe over the patient's closed eyelid, scanning through the eye, and note that we're going to orient the probe, both superior and inferior, looking all the way through the eye from the anterior aspect down through the posterior part. Now, from this orientation, I like to have the probe marker oriented laterally towards the outer part of the patient's face so that I know where the structures of the posterior part of the eye are oriented. Now let's take a look at that same ocular ultrasound approach from a more anterior position. Note again that we're placing the probe, the high-frequency linear type array probe, over the closed eyelid in a side-to-side -side orientation. Now the probe marker is going to be oriented laterally towards the outer part of the patient's face. Now remember that if there's any question of trauma or globe rupture, we have to be extremely careful when applying the probe onto the eyelid. In fact, we should really be scanning through a copious amount of gel, known as a gel pillow, and really not applying any pressure down to the actual eye. To complete our examination of the eye, we should also perform ocular ultrasound from the vertical approach, having the probe in an up and down configuration. Note here, we're again scanning through the closed eyelid. Now we have the probe marker up towards the patient's head. We want to scan from side to side to fully investigate the eye in a second plane for any signs of pathology. And here's just a closed in view showing the probe placed over the closed eyelid. Here's a more anterior view, again showing the vertical approach to bedside ocular ultrasound. Note the high-frequency probe placed over the closed eyelid, and scanning from side to side will image all parts of the eye. Remember that the probe marker for this vertical approach is going to be oriented superiorly. And imaging in two planes will best round out the examination of the eyeball. 
Now let's take a moment to review the anatomy of the eye that we'll see using bedside ocular ultrasound. Here's a nice pictorial of the eyeball, lateral of the eye to the left, and medial aspect of the eye to the right. Let's start with the most anterior structure, the cornea, which we see towards the top part of the image. We can see the lens, which is located directly below the cornea, which will have a distinct hyperechoic or bright appearance on bedside ultrasound. We note the iris coming in to attach to the lens, another structure that can be seen using bedside ultrasound. Now that region anterior to the iris is known as the anterior chamber. And we can also image pathology within the anterior chamber, really hyphemas. Now behind the lens is going to live the vitreous body filled with vitreous gel, which allows the eyeball to keep that rounded configuration. We see blood vessels arching up into the vitreous body. Now let's recall the outer parts of the eyeball and the fibrous coat, the sclera, is the outermost portion of the eye. We see the medial aspect of the coats of the eyeball, the choroid, which is the vascular layer which supplies the retina with blood. And then we see the inner neural layer, the retina. And we note that the optic nerve comes in posteriorly, another structure which can be seen on bedside ultrasound to give rise to the retina. Now we note here the indentation of the macula, which is seen just lateral to the optic nerve. And we recall that the macula is the area of the densest composition of rods and cones. Here's a typical ultrasound of a normal eye. This eye is taken in the horizontal or side-to-side -side probe configuration with a probe marker lateral. We see the cornea, the anteriormost structure of the eye, and we see below the cornea the rounded iris. Note the classic appearance of the lens just below the iris, which has a hyperchoic or bright appearance due to its very hard refractive pattern. And we can see little refraction waves coming off the back of the lens. Note the anterior chamber, that potential space, just anterior to the iris and below the cornea. We see the vitreous body in back of the lens and note the retina well seen here to the posterior aspect of the vitreous body. This retina is well tacked down and in opposition to the posterior aspect of the eye. That's a normal examination. Now if we have the probe in a side to side or transverse orientation across the eye with a probe marker lateral and we aim the probe a little bit more inferiorly down towards the patient's foot, the optic nerve sheath will come into view. Note the optic nerve has a classic appearance on bedside ultrasound. It's dark or hypoechoic, and we can see it leading right up to the back of the eye. In conclusion, thanks for tuning in to part one of ocular ultrasound. I hope I've been able to score the point through this module that ocular ultrasound is an easily learned and very helpful technique for the emergency physician, and in the year 2011, finally allows excellent imaging of that black box posterior area of the eye. I hope to see you back in the future as SoundBytes continues and as we return in Ocular Ultrasound Part 2, focusing on retinal pathology.